Welcome to J.J. Isaacson Field here in Ralston, Nebraska at Seymour Smith Park for some Sunday morning baseball. How about that? Corn Belt League baseball coming to you live on the Corn Belt League Network where we've got the Bombers and the Haymakers going head to head in the first of three games on our YouTube channel here today. So welcome in. Tyler Reedy here with you on the Corn Belt League Network riding solo today, but pleased to be with you as always. Jaden Taylor's alongside me as our producer slash director. Pleased to have you with us. We got a great matchup as we head to the final stretch of our 2022 summer season. Corn Belt League about ready to head into the playoffs about a week, week and a half from now. And we'll take a look at the scores from the last week heading into today, July 11th through the 17th. And two teams we'll see later today, the Black Sox and the Phil Ballers, one big 14-7 and 12-2. And then Tuesday night, July 12th, that one we saw Rail Riders picking up a big win over the Crop Dusters. The Bombers, who we've got going this morning, 14 to eight. Their first of two big wins as we take a look at their second big win coming a couple nights later on the 14th. They took down the Black Sox 12-1. Red Raiders got a big win as well. We'll see them later today as well. And then looking at Friday and Saturday night, last night, few of these teams that we'll see today we saw in action as we get set ready to go we've got the teams on the field ready to start this one at 11 o'clock in the morning a bit of a rescheduling here for this Sunday morning as Danny Sponberg will lead off for the Bombers Haymakers starting Cole Warner the left-hander today Sponberg takes a deep breath and steps in and we are ready for Plenty of baseball here today. Warner's first pitch is grounded through the hole into left field, a base hit. And Danny Sponberg continues to thrive in the batter's box. He's on board first with the first pitch of the game. 11 and it's 80 degrees here at the ballpark. 
82 degrees. Now batting, the left fielder. Partly cloudy skies. About the best day we've had weather-wise for Corn Belt League Baseball all year. No heat, no storms. We check both those boxes. As that's upstairs to James Grease, the left fielder. Look at the batting order for the Bombers today. Spawnberg leads off in right. Grease, the left fielder. Tanner Black, the center fielder, third. Nico Saul, the first baseman, fourth. Braden Olsen, the third baseman, fifth. As the throw over is not in time. Spawnberg's a big base running threat, but he's safe. Back to the order. Kyle Weber, the second baseman, is sixth. Caleb Lemon, the shortstop, seventh. Philip Jordan, the catcher, eighth. Joey Burreal, the DH, ninth. And Rebecca Lair, the extra hitter, bats tenth. For a Bombers lineup that's had a good offensive week. As that pitch catches the outside corner for strike one on Greece. Spawnberg. 15 stolen bags on the season to lead the team by a mile. As that one's on the outside, Warner locating well. And he's ahead one and two on Greece. Cole Warner comes in with a 2.55 ERA in five starts and one relief appearance this year. He's thrown 22 innings. As that is just low. Two and two the count now on Greece. You look at the numbers on Warner. He's just about one step behind Aiden Urbom, the ace for the Haymakers in just about every category. So a great one-two punch on the mound that the Haymakers have going as that one's in the dirt. Sponberg takes off. Throw down from the catcher is dropped at second. Golden threw it just to the third base side of second, and it was not handled at second base by... Tyler Merkel, so Sponberger gets second base on the wild pitch. Now the count's full. Tapped foul. Grease stays alive. Cole Warner leads all Haymaker pitchers with at least 10 innings pitched with 17.4 pitches per inning. So he's had some long frames this season, and Grease working the full count, not doing, doing him any favors here as he lines this one towards short. Catch is made on the fly, and Sponberg will be doubled off at second base. Zach Tanabe is the shortstop today for the Haymakers, and he made the grab just before that ball hit the dirt, and Sponberg gets caught in no man's land. And a big help for Warner. He's got two outs, and the base is empty. So a line out into a 6-4 double play. And now Tanner Black, the center fielder, takes one outside for ball one. Black batting 149 on the year. And he takes one in the zone, one and one the count. Black is a candidate to get something going here with two outs. He leads the Bombers with four two out RBI on the season. Tied for the team lead. As the 1-1 one -one from Warner is skied foul. One and two to count. Warner in his last start against the Black Sox last Sunday went four innings, giving up five runs, three of them earned. He struck out six through 84 pitches. As the count now runs to two and two, that game was a 10-4 loss for the Haymakers. They come in at 10 and 10, Bombers at 12 and nine. And as the count is full now on black. So some good ABs from the Bombers here in the first. We've seen both Grease, the left fielder, and Black, the center fielder, run the count to three and two. Now the payoff home. Line back into center field, and that was a barrel right over the head of Warner for a base hit. And two singles, two hard hit singles in the inning for the Bombers. Nico Saul. So now we'll see Nico Saul, the first baseman, batting 286 on the season, and we've seen a couple hard hit baseballs already. Here's the guy who leads the team in hard hits with 15 of them, but he waves through a 
well-located pitch on the outside for strike one. Saul is one for seven with a double against the Haymakers this year. And he waves through another one. Warner's got him ahead, nothing in two. Cole Warner's gotten ahead of each of the last two hitters, but both of them have gotten it back to a 3-2 count and then put the ball in play. Here's the 0-2 to Saul. Outside, one ball, two strikes. Tanner Black, the center fielder, has good speed at first. He's a perfect 8-for-8 eight eight stealing bags this year. That is the 1-2 home to Saul. Sees the runner take off, pitches up and in, and the throwdown is in time to get him. So the perfect stolen base streak is over for Tanner Black. A great throw from Ryan Golden behind the plate, and the top of the first inning is done. Some traffic on the base pass, but nothing from it from the Bombers. We go to the bottom of the first. Haymakers coming to bat when we return. Bottom of the first Watson. inning. Bombers held scoreless with some base running troubles in the top of the first at a strike one from Zane Layden. As the Haymakers come to bat. David Swanson, the third baseman, leads them off. A one from Layden is lifted out of play to the right side. Haymaker's order is led off by Swanson, and then the first baseman, Trevor Yorgis, bats second. Left fielder, Dane Small, third. D.H. Jackson, Doty, cleanup. Center fielder, Alec Villanueva, fifth. Catcher, Ryan Golden, sixth. Shortstop, Zach Tanabe, seventh. Second baseman, Tyler Merkel, eighth. And right fielder, Carter Betts, ninth. As this is fouled off of the lower leg by Swanson, still nothing in two. Zane Layden on the bump. For the Bombers today, he was the Corn Belt League Pitcher of the Week back in week two, June 13th through the 19th as he fires outside. One and two on Swanson. Laid in with a 3.78 ERA and seven appearances, six starts on the year. That one outside as well, two and two. Trying to locate that slider. Got to make it a little bit more competitive, though, to get a chase from Swanson. As the 2-2 pitch is out over the plate, hit high in the air, left center field, driving Grease and Black toward the gap. And the catch is made by Grease. And Swanson is retired for out number one. 
So he hit it fairly well, but unlike most days, there isn't now that the jet stream blowing out to left. The Wind is very Trevor calm today. Yorgis. As Trevor Yorgis will step in. He's the first baseman out of Graceland University, and he swings through the first offering from Layden for strike one. Yorgis hitting 219 on the year. Takes just inside and off the plate. One ball, one strike. Two and one. Layden last appeared starting against the Haymakers on July 1st, so it's been a while, but he went seven innings in that one. Giving up six runs, three of them earned. He only struck out two. He threw 87 pitches. Second time this year he's thrown seven innings in a game. And that was against the Haymakers as he makes some close pitches but doesn't get some calls. And it's a base on balls to Yorgis with one out. And now Dane Small will come to bat with now the Haymakers the putting a man on first. Small going after the first pitch, lifts it into shallow right field. Sponberg going toward the line, makes the catch. And two down as Small flies out on the first pitch he sees. Bombers have a strong defensive outfield. We've seen some now batting. spectacular the diving Hunter. grabs from Tanner Black out in center field. Jackson Sponberg Bowie. can fly out and right, and he's got a great arm. Jackson Doty, the DH, will come to the plate now. One on, two out. As he tries to go to the opposite field, but is late and slaps it foul. One pitch, rolled over to second base. Weber fields cleanly and throws the first in time. So Layden and Warner each work a scoreless first inning. Bombers and Haymakers headed to the second on a Sunday morning here on the Corn Belt League Network. Top of the second Nico inning, Bombers Ball. and Haymakers scoreless on the Corn Bell League Network. Cole Warner goes back to work as Nico Saul heads back to the plate and takes outside ball one. Saul was left standing in the batter's box as Tanner Black was caught stealing to end the first inning. When he pitches in for a strike. Bombers had two singles in that first inning, but both base runners were erased. Sponberg on a line-out double play, and then Black on the caught stealing. As the count moves to two and one on Saul. This is Cole Warner's first outing against the Bombers this year, and he gets another wave and a miss. So he's now thrown four strikes to Nico Saul, but across two different innings, so now two and two the count. 
And he gets them swinging. Great off-speed pitch tailing away into the right-hand batter's box. And Saul is down on strikes. Now batting the third baseman from Dawn University, number 35, Braden Olsen. So that moves it to Braden Olsen, the third baseman, former hitter of the week back in week three toward the end of June. And he takes one in the dirt, ball one. Olsen won that award, but he's really been struggling ever since. It was June 20th through June 26th, the week that he took home the hardware, but he's 0 for 11 since that time period. However, he lifts this one, shallow center field. Villanueva coming on, and he makes the catch. Two quick outs for Cole Warner. And an opportunity for his eighth one, two, three now inning of the year the as Kyle Weber, Weber steps in. University, number three, Kyle Weber. Weber lines one into left center field. That's over short and down in front of Villanueva, so there will be no one, two, three inning. Weber is on with the third bomber single of the Ball game. Now batting the shortstop from Concordia University, number 77, Kayla Blemen. Now Kayla Blemen comes up with a man on and two down. We've seen several times Bombers feeling confident going after the first pitch on Warner. There it is again, and it's past third into left field. Lemon with a hard hit single to left. We'll see if the Bombers can create a little bit of two-out magic. They've got first and second here in the second inning with Phillip Jordan due up. Now batting the catcher from Presentation College, number 47, Phillip Jordan. Phillip Jordan is the catcher. He bats eighth and has a big opportunity to drive in the game's first run. And he's after the first pitch, but rolls it over to short. It'll be a long throw for Tanabe, and it's high and up against the wall. And the game's first run will come in on a wild throw from short. Weber crosses home. Lemon goes to third. And Jordan is to second base for a 1-0 Bombers lead. Sometimes it's just about putting the ball in play. Don't necessarily need to get it into the outfield. We've seen across the league this season plenty of defensive errors. And Tanabe commits the first one on this Sunday morning as there's strike one to Joey now, Burrell, the DH. Hitter from Penn State Beaver, number 69, Joey Burrell. Lemon at third, Jordan at second. 0-1 on Burrell. Just off the outside corner. 1-1 one one the count. Burrell is 2-4 for four with an RBI against the Haymakers this year. The count moves to 1-2 and, and Burrell has made a complete 180 in the batter's box. In June, he was one for 13, which is one run batted in. And in July, he's nine for 21 with five RBI. So he's really coming in with some confidence today. As he takes that in the dirt, good block by Golden to keep the runners at bay. And now two and two the count on Burrell. He's hitting 333 with runners in scoring position this year. Two two from Warner, swing and a miss. Good fastball on the inside strikes him out. But the Bombers get one unearned run off Warner and they lead one nothing. As we'll take it to the bottom of the second, Haymakers looking to answer back here on the Corn Belt League Network.
After he worked a clean first inning, allowing just one walk. And now he's got a lead to work with. one nothing Bombers as we move to the bottom of the second. Tyler Reedy here with you on the Corn Belt League Network for some Sunday morning baseball. Blown away ball one to Alec Villanueva, the center fielder. First run of the game for the Bombers, scored on a throwing error by Zach Tanabe at short, and we've seen plenty of errors between the Bombers and Haymakers this year. As that's on the ground and into right a base hit. Villanueva's on to lead off with a single, and to finish the thought, you go back to the last meeting on July 1st when the Bombers beat the Haymakers 8-6. Both teams made three defensive errors and a throwing error by Caden Van Hill of the Haymakers ended up bringing home the two deciding runs in the sixth inning for the Bombers. It was on a Kyle Weber bunt. That's a low and in ball one to Ryan Golden, the catcher. And the 1-0 is pulled foul. Good play by the third base coach over there, and he fires it back into Zane Layden. Haymakers have a new head coach as we've seen Kellen Richards move on to Pitt State. Dwayne Hosey is now at the helm for the Haymakers as there's a wave and a miss, or rather a foul tip. Golden just got a piece of it, one and two the count. And Villanueva was in motion from first. More on Hosey, he is a former major leaguer. He was drafted by the Chicago White Sox back in 1987 and spent time with the Oakland A's, Milwaukee Brewers, the Royals, Red Sox. As this is hit into right field, Spawnberg chasing it toward the corner and he makes the catch. And that's the first out. Now batting the shortstop. From Graceland University, number 50, Zachary Tanabe. So now Tanabe will step in. Shortstop for the Haymakers, looking to atone for his throwing error in the top of the second. He takes strike one. Tanabe hitting 250 on the year, and coming into the game, he leads the team with 36 at bats. Takes one low and away, one and one the count. Tanabe's going to be an aggressive hitter. He has 10 strikeouts since his last walk and he rips this one into left center field. That's down for a hit. Villanueva got a great jump and he's going to third and in there safely to put runners on the corners with one out. So Tanabe does atone for the error. And the Haymakers have something cooking in the bottom of the second now, then, for the second Tyler Merkel. From Nebraska Wesleyan, number three, Tyler Merkel. Merkel, the second baseman, batting eighth. Trying to get this game tied at one. And he waves and misses strike one. Ball doesn't necessarily have to be put in play to get this game even. Zane Layden leads all Bomber starters with eight wild pitches, so that's something to keep an eye on. Philip Jordan is behind the plate. As that's up and away, one and one. Merkel batting 308 with men in scoring position this year. Runner takes off from first. That's fouled straight back into the fence. One and two the count. That's Tanabe taken off from first. Tanabe's four for four stealing bases this year. There's a one two. Tanabe runs again. It's lifted into left center field. Catch is made by Grease. Here comes Villanueva from third. The throw is high and back to the backstop. That will get Tanabe into second and the game is tied at one on a sacrifice fly by Tyler Merkel. And it's game on in the second inning between the Bombers and the Haymakers. 
now batting the right fielder from Nebraska Wesleyan, number 56, Carter Fett. Here's Carter Betts with a man in second and two away. And he takes a strike. Betts is the nine hitter in right field today. And he knuckles this one to second base. Kyle Weber has time. He sets the feet and throws to first in time. But the Haymakers get one back, and the game is tied right back up at one. We'll head to the third inning. Bombers one, Haymakers one, with a good one brewing on the Corn Belt League Network. Top of the third inning, Bombers and Haymakers even at one as the 10 hitting extra hitter, Rebecca Lair leads off against Cole Warner. Warner's thrown two innings and allowed an unearned run. As he fires ball one. Warner at 33 pitches through two, his counterpart Zane Layden's at 29, so both pitchers off to a fairly efficient start. As that's foul tipped. One and one the count on Lair. Bombers scored in the top of the second inning after back-to-back -back singles from Weber and Lemon and then a throwing error by Zach Tanabe on Philip Jordan's ground ball. One and two now on Lair. Two balls, two strikes. Lair is the team leader, seeing 4.2 pitches per plate appearance. She's working another long count to lead off the third, three and two. Full count, pitch coming home. It's lined just foul down the left side. Lair struck out three times, but also drove in a run in her last appearance Sunday against the Rail Riders. And now she skies this one back over our heads and foul. We ask that you please turn off foul balls for the first or third base dugout. Warner trying to find a way to get past Rebecca Lair at the bottom of the order, and he does, swing and a miss. Lair down on strikes, the throw to third goes into left field. There's one away here in the third, and now back to the top of the order with Danny Spawn. Top of the order, the right fielder from Southeast Community College, number one, Danny Spomberg. So Warner has struck out back to back, both swinging. Burreal to end the second, Lair to start the third, and now Danny Spawnberg, who singled and was doubled off at second in the first inning. He swings through one for the first strike. Grounded, past Warner, 
who falls over a little awkwardly, but the throw is made in time behind him by Merkel, and that's a great play with Sponberg running as well as he does. Looks like Warner's all right. He took a little bit of a tumble there, reaching back for that ball. Now batting. Showing off his flexibility, and we've got two outs here in the third for James Grease. Grease lined into a six forward double play. Back in the first inning, and he takes one outside, ball one. That's in there. One and one the count. Cole Warner working very quickly, not phased by the run scored in the top of the second. Of course, it helps that his offense answered right back. As it's now two and one on Greece. Outfielder from Doan University. Takes that one low, three and one. Grease with the line out in the first inning is now 0 for his last 11. And grounds this one left side. Picked up at third by Swanson and he throws in time. Good stretch at first by Trevor Yorgis and it's a one, two, three inning for Cole Warner. And we'll take it to the bottom of the third. Game tied at one. Bombers and Haymakers trying to break through here on the Corn Belt League Network. No matter what your age, skill level, or position, your baseball season begins at the Strike Zone. Featuring state-of-the-art batting cages, group and private instruction, the Strike Zone provides athletes all the training and equipment you need to get your game to the next level. Give the gift of development to your baseball or softball player. Purchase your Strike Zone gift cards today. Baseball never ends at the Strike Zone. One won the score, Bombers and Haymakers at J.J. Isaacson Field. Zane Layden back to work for the Bombers as he fires low and away, ball one. Top of the order due up for the Haymakers, starting with David Swanson, who made a fine play at third to end top of the third inning. So 1-0 is again in the dirt. 2-0 the count. Swanson flew out to left back in the first. 2-0, up and in. Swanson bends out of the way, and Layden has fallen behind 3-0 to the leadoff hitter. But he gets a strike back, outside corner. Three and one the count. Bombers have a little bit of action in the bullpen as this is reached out and foul tipped. Three and two the count. Laid into Swanson, three two pitch, line back into center field. Good piece of hitting by David Swanson and he's on to lead off the third with a hard hit single to center. Now 
now batting the first baseman from Graceland University, number 53. And warming Trevor up in the Hoogan. Bombers bullpen, it is Adam Eggert. He is the ace for this Bomber pitching staff, and with a game as competitive as this, Bombers look like they really want to take their shot, getting him loose. 0-1-1 the count on Jorgis after the foul ball. Layden is at just 36 pitches now. As this is rolled over to second, takes a big hop, but it's played well by Weber, and he throws in time to get Jorgis, and there's one away. Swanson moves up to second on the ground out. Now batting, the left fielder from the University of Sioux Falls, number 32, Dane Small. Eggert is not terribly well rested out there in the bullpen. He threw six innings, 86 pitches just three days ago against the Black Sox as their strike one to Dane Small, the left fielder. So if you do bring Eggert in, you're not going to get a ton of distance out of him, you wouldn't think. As the 0-1 from Layden is fouled straight back. And an unsuspecting passerby walking to back to their car beyond the perimeter fence gets a souvenir as it bounces off the concrete and over the wall. 0-2 oh the count on Small. And that's way inside and it hit him and that is a big mistake from Zane Layden on an 0-2 pitch. He runs it inside and Small is plunked. So now it's two on one out for Jackson Doty, the cleanup man. Now batting, the designated hitter from Washburn University, number 23, Jackson Doty. Jackson Doty with a big opportunity. Two on, one out. Haymakers looking for the lead, and that is sliced foul on the first pitch. Doty, the team leader coming into the game in batting average, OPS. Of course, on base percentage and slugging. 0-1 pitch, off speed, just up and out of the zone. One ball, one strike. Doty grounded out to second back in the first inning. He's hitting 429 with runners in scoring position this year. The pitch hit toward foul territory. Long run for Greece, and he cannot get there. That is down for a foul ball. So one and two of the count. Grease moves back to his position. Layden and Doty will each step out for a moment and think through their next moves. Swanson has good speed at second base as the one two is pulled foul. Still a ball and two strikes. Small and Swanson, the base runners, with 10 stolen bases between them this year as the 1 2 is outside. 2 and 2 the count. First and second, one out. Layden's 2-2 pitch, wave and a miss. And that was down and in the dirt. Doty chased it, and he's out number two. And he's the first strikeout now for Zane Layden. As Alec Villanueva will try to pick him up with two Alec down. Villanueva. Villanueva singled and scored the tying run in the second inning. Right, that's enough for a hot dog, right? Two on, two out. First pitch to Villanueva, outside ball one. Eggert still up in that 
Bomber bullpen off to the first base side. As Villanueva takes it, and it is inside, 2-0. and Villanueva hitting 222 with runners in scoring position this year. He doubled in his last game, Friday against the Black Sox. 2-0 pitch, runner takes off, going to third. The throw down is not in time. Swanson just beat the throw, and interestingly, Haymakers just sent one runner, not looking for the double steal. So now first and third with two outs as Swanson collects another stolen base. That is his fifth on the year. Lined over second into right center field and this will give the Haymakers the lead. Swanson scores, small to third. Villanueva comes through with two out. And it's 2-1 Haymakers in the bottom of the third on a reigning RBI single to right center. Now batting the catcher from Cobb County Community College, number 55, Ryan Goulden. Here's Ryan Goulden, the catcher. Flew out to right in the second. Takes one up and away, ball one, but... Big pickup for the Haymakers after Doty went down swinging with first and second one out. Villanueva delivers with two down in the inning. As that's low and away, 2-0 and on Golden. And now we'll get a mound meeting here. Eggert is still up in the Bombers bullpen. Leiden has allowed four hits, two runs, and two and two-thirds innings here. And it's just a mound visit at the end. Leiden has fallen behind Golden here, 2-0. and oh. He was doing a nice job throwing first pitch strikes. He was seven out of nine throwing first pitch strikes through his first two innings, but we're seeing him get behind more and more here in the third. As the throw over to first is late. Villanueva at first, small at third. Another throw, Villanueva has stolen four bases on six attempts this year. Now Layden comes home, that's outside. Three and oh on Golden and potential to load the bases here for Zach Tanabe who already has a base hit today. Over again to first is late. Nico Saul, big first baseman holding the runner on. They throw over again for a fourth time. Again, Villanueva beats it back. He has stolen two bases against the Bombers this year, and well, they're just going to put on Golden. So the bases are juiced with two outs. Intentional walk to Golden and Zach Tanabe, who already has a base hit today, has a massive opportunity to put the Haymakers comfortably in front as we see a courtesy runner at first base. Eden Urbom, the pitching sensation for the Haymakers, will take the place of Golden at first. First pitch to Tanabe outside, ball one. One-zero pitch inside, two and zero. Oh. Layden has seen his command slip away from him here in the third. 
Already a hit by pitch, intentional walk in the inning after a 3-0 count, and here's another 3-0 count, but the problem is they have nowhere to put Tanabe. Three and zero, time called, and this could be it for Layden. Bombers will meet once again at the mound, and Layden sure is done, and that's a disappointment for one of their better pitchers this year. He only makes it through two and two thirds. He'll hand the ball to the ace Adam Eggert to try and shut things down, but Layden goes. Two and two third allows four hits, two earned runs, strikes out one, walks two, and he's responsible for all three base runners. We'll take a quick break and return to tell you about Adam Eggert as the Bombers try and keep things at a 2-1 deficit here in the third. Adam Eggert is the call to the bullpen for the Bombers. Bases are loaded with two outs, and he inherits not only that situation, but a 3-0 count to Zach Tanabe, the shortstop. Eggert has been the man on the mound for the Bombers this year as he fires the strike to make it 3-1. Team leading an ERA of 184, a whip of 113. And he's a strike thrower, 66%. Strike percentage leads the team, and he gets a grounder right back to the mound, and he gets out of the inning. Great work by Adam Eggert to inherit the bases loaded in a 3-0 count and get the job done. Haymakers limited to just one run, but they take a 2-1 lead as we head to the top of the fourth on the Corn Belt League Network. Top of the fourth inning, Haymakers have taken a 2-1 lead and Cole Warner pitches with a lead for the first time today as he faces middle of the order. Three, four, and five hitters for the Bombers. Tanner Black leads things off. And 
waves at the first pitch for strike one. Black singled and was caught stealing in the first. It'll be Black, Saul, and Olsen. And the one is inside, one and one. Haymakers had the bases loaded with two down in the third inning. They got one run out of it, but Adam Egger did a nice job coming out of the bullpen and getting the final out. As it's one and two, foul tip into the glove. And Warner strikes him out. Swing and a miss. Warner down on four pitches, strikeout number four. Now batting. That brings the up Nico baseman. Saul, who is the first strikeout seven, victim back Nico in the second. Saul. Pitch to Saul, taken all the way. Standing like a statue from the left side of the batter's box. Strike one. One is outside, one ball, one strike. Joe Saul picked up a couple hits and two RBI against the Black Sox on Thursday as he takes this one just out of the zone, two and one. Saul has been consistent force this year. He's only picked it up recently. He's driven in eight runs, scored nine runs, walked six times, and stolen five bases in his last. 10 games. The 2 1 pitch is lifted foul. 2 and 2 to count. And another strikeout. Warner puts it in a great spot, and Saul can't get to it. Swing and a miss for strikeout number five, and there are two away in the fourth. Now batting the third baseman from Gong University, number 35, Braden Olsen. So now it's Braden Olsen, the third baseman. Bombers got off to a great start at the plate, collecting four hard hit singles and scoring a run in the first two innings, but gone down quietly ever since as the last. Six have been retired now by Warner. Outside ball one to Braden Olson. And on the inside corner, one and one. One one pitch from Warner, bounces away and the count runs to two and one. Cole Warner's season high for strikeouts is eight, he set that in his start against the Crop Dusters on June 28th. And he's a strike away from his sixth as he gets it to two and two on Olsen. Two two pitch. Just low and off the outside corner, count is full. Three and two with two outs. Kyle Weber on deck. Warner's pitch, high chopper toward third. Tough play and the throw is not in time. Swanson looked like he was fooled a little bit by the spin on that ball. Wasn't a totally clean pickup with the glove as he had to backhand it. And his throw to first just a half now step too late. And an infield hit for Olsen University. keeps the inning going. Number three, Kyle Weber. So that's hit number five for the Bombers. They have one run on five hits, one error. Two runs, four hits, one error for the Haymakers. And as Kyle Weber chases the first pitch and rolls it to third, nice play in the hole by Swanson. And he flips the second in time. And Warner has settled in nicely. Four innings with just one unearned run allowed. And his team has a 2-1 lead. Haymakers and Bombers head to the bottom of the fourth.
Bottom of the fourth inning, Tyler Merkel leads off for the Haymakers. They have their eight, nine, and one hitters. As the first pitch is in for strike one from Adam Eggert, who remains in the game after getting the final out with the bases loaded in the bottom of the third. That's lifted to the right side and foul. Nothing in two on Merkel, the second baseman. He drove in the Haymakers' first run in the second inning with a sack fly to left. As he takes it just off the outside, good eye. One ball, two strikes. Speed pitch just stays upstairs. Two and two to count. Merkel steps out for a moment. Eggert has not moved from the rubber. Locked in with two strikes. And he gets the punch out. High heater. Gets the wave and miss. And that's out number one in the fourth. So the first strikeout for Eggert, and now the right fielder Carter Betts will come to bat. And the first pitch gets away for ball one. Carter Betts grounded out to second his first time up. Way outside, 2-0 oh the count. Eggert last pitched against the Black Sox on Thursday, going six innings, giving up one run, which was unearned. He struck out five. And he struck out as many as ten in a game this year, as that is upstairs. Three balls, no strikes on the nine-hitter. The 3-0, bet's taken all the way, and it's a strike. Eggert has seen the Haymakers once this year, back on June the 20th, as he walks bets with one out. He threw five innings of four-run baseball. Two of the runs were earned, and that was the 10 strikeout. From the order, the third baseman from the University of Sioux Falls, number 38, David Swanson. So after the walk, we go back to the top of the haymaker order, David Swanson. He flew out to left in the first, singled, stole third, and scored in the third. And he gets a good rip off and fouls it straight back. One pitch, just upstairs. One ball, one strike on Swanson. Haymakers lead it two to one in the first of our three games at J.J. Isaacson Field. As the one one is low two and one. At two o'clock, we'll see the Red Raiders and the Black Sox. Jack McGonigal will join me for that one. And then at five o'clock, the Crap Dusters and Filt Ballers. Three of seven games we will be broadcasting between now and Tuesday. As this is lifted, right field, long run Sponberg. It's slicing away from him and down in foul territory. The hat comes flying off for Sponberg in right field. Two and two still on Swanson. Eggert's pitch, in there on the outside corner. Swanson 
can't believe it. That classic long look at the home plate umpire, but he's got to go back to the dugout, and that's strikeout now, number two for Adam Egger. Grace University, number 53, Trevor Yorgis. That brings up Trevor Yorgis, the first baseman. A walk and a ground out for him today. And he takes a strike. Bets at first. He walked with one out in between the strikeouts of Merkel and Swanson. Outside. Pitch is dropped but stays in front of the catcher, Jordan. One and one. Jorgis hitting 219 coming into this one. This one one is outside. Two balls and one strike. Carter Betts has stolen just one base this year. Here comes a 2-1 to Jorgis. And that's fouled straight back. Clanging off the fence. Two and two the count. So although Eggert has two strikeouts in the inning, the Haymakers are doing well to make him work for it. Seen several 2-2, two, 3-2 two, two counts. As that one locked up Yorgis, a beautiful off-speed pitch on the inside. And three strikeouts in the inning for Adam Eggert. We'll go to the top of the fifth inning. Can the Bombers get that run back? They trail 2-1 here on the Corn Belt League Network. Top of the fifth inning, competitive ball game between the Bombers and Haymakers. It's 2-1 Haymakers as the visiting team on the scoreboard. The Bombers come to bat in the fifth. Starts with Caleb Lemon as he takes strike one against Cole Warner, who's having a fine outing. Four innings, five strikeouts. He's allowed five hits, hasn't walked anybody as Lemon tries to bunt but can't get it down 0-2. Warner in these four innings has allowed one run, but it was unearned, so his ERA continues to go down. O2 pitch on a bounce. Great pickup at short by Tanabi, and he throws in time for the out. So despite the one error by Tanabi that brought home the run in the second inning, we've seen some great infield defense from Swanson and Tanabi on the left side for the Haymakers, and now one out for Philip Jordan. Jordan was the man who reached on that Tanabi error in the second inning, did not get an RBI as the run scored. Outside, ball one. Cole Warner at 65 pitches as he gets a big swing and a miss. One and one the count. Warner has thrown as many as 84 pitches this year, and that was in his last outing on July 10th, a week ago. One one pitch, another cut and a miss. 
Warner mixing his pitches very well, and he has missed bats consistently after a rocky first couple frames. One, two to Jordan. High fly, right center field. The outfield was shallow, and it gets over the head of Betts out there. Jordan can run for a while, and he will motor into second base with a double. So that could have been a routine play for Betts or Villanueva, but they were both playing very shallow, and that allowed the ball to just carry over now their heads. The designated hitter from Penn State Beaver, number 69, Joey Burrill. So now it's Joey Burrill, the DH, tying run in scoring position, and looks like we will have a pinch runner. Second base. Jordan, the catcher, does not run terribly well. There's a big cut and a miss from Burrill as he was late on that one. Strike one. I believe Levi Story may be the pinch runner at second base. We'll confirm that in a moment. 0-1 pitch on the outside corner. Nothing and two, and indeed it is Story. And before the 0-2 pitch, Brief conference between the battery of Warner and Golden. Doesn't take very long. Don't necessarily have to come right after Brill. A, you have pitches to play with, and B, you have light hitter and Rebecca Lair on deck. The 0 2 pitch. He goes right after him and gets him to swing through it for the strikeout, and that is number six for Cole Warner, and it's the second out in the fifth. Now batting, the extra hitter from Dawson Community College, number 24, Rebecca Lair. So that brings up Rebecca Lair. Can she come through to get this game tied? She struck out swinging back in the third, and she takes on the upper outside corner for strike one. Lair has just three hits this year. One of those did come with runners in scoring positions. He's hitting 125 in that category this year. And that's outside, one and one. Story at second base. Jordan doubled with one out. Story pinch running for him, and that's a great pitch on the outside corner. One and two, and Warner just needs to execute one more time to make it through five strong innings on this Sunday now afternoon. Here's the one-two pitch, swing and a miss. He strikes out Lair to end the inning. Seven Ks for Warner as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Two one haymakers on a great outing from their starting pitcher. You're watching Fort Belt League Baseball here on the CBL Network.
Dean Small leads off in the bottom of the fifth inning. Haymakers trying to build on their lead, but that's no easy task against Adam Eggert. And he fires an off-speed pitch in for strike one. 2-1 the score, Haymakers in front. Bombers took a 1-0 lead in the top of the second, but one in the second, one in the third from the Haymakers for a lead change, as that's foul tipped, 0-2. story of the game has been starting pitching and the stark difference between what the Bombers got and Zane Layden who went just two and two third allowing two runs and the Haymakers getting five innings, seven strikeouts and one unearned run allowed from Cole Warner. 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss. Beautiful tailing action away from the right hand hitter Dane Small for the strikeout, and Adam Eggert has strikeout number four. University, number 23, Jackson Doty. So Jackson Doty will step in. I mentioned the big difference in starting pitching, but the Bombers sure can make that up in a hurry with the talent of Adam Eggert. As that is low, ball one to Doty. Eggert has recorded five outs since coming into the game, and four of them have been by way of the strikeout, and the one out that was not with a K was the ground out with the bases loaded. And there's a well-located strike, one and one the count. Doty is 0 for two, and he takes another one in there, one and two. He's already struck out once. That was at the hands of Layden in the third. And now the one-two pitch. Popped up, tailing away from Greece, but he makes the catch, crossing the left field line. Two down in the fifth, and Eggert is pitching extremely well here out of the bullpen. Got to give him credit for shutting things down and keeping his team firmly in the game here in the middle innings as he'll deal with Alec Villanueva, the center fielder. And Villanueva has been a thorn in the Bombers' side today with a single and a run scored in the second and an RBI single. The go-ahead RBI single in the third, and it's a three-hit game for Villanueva as he laces one into left field. And he's aboard with two outs. Now batting, the catcher from Cloud County Community College, number 55, Ryan Golden. So here's Ryan Golden, the catcher. Villanueva on for the third time. His three singles make this his third multi-hit game of the year. This is looped into shallow right center and down for a hit. There goes Villanueva for third. He is safe. Ball gets away toward the dugout. And he will hold at third base with Golden taking second. And we're starting to see a little bit of frenzied hitting here in the fifth from the Haymakers. They put two in scoring position with two outs against Adam Eggert on the single and advance on the throw from Golden. So here comes a pinch runner. Aiden Urbaum will once again take the place of Golden. Second base from Dakota State, number two, Aiden Urbaum. Now batting the shortstop from Graceland University, number 50, Zachary Tanabe. Zach Tanabe will get another chance against Eggert. He grounded out back to Eggert with two outs and the bases loaded in the third, and now he has two in scoring position with two outs in the fifth. And he pulls it, foul ball. Just past third. Going to be tough to get one fair down that third base line with Olsen, the third baseman, keeping Villanueva close at the bag. Now the 0-1 to Tanabe. Fouled straight back. Boy, he's coming up there. Swinging away with confidence. Two good rips on Eggert, but he falls behind 0-2. Thank you. 
And he waves and misses for a strikeout. Eggert is again out of trouble, and we're going to strut off that mound. Those two hits were nothing to him. He ends the fifth with a strikeout, and we go to the sixth. Bombers have six outs to get one run. We'll see if they can do it coming up next on the Corn Belt League Network. Tap of the sixth inning, Haymakers lead the Bombers 2-1 here at J.J. Isaacson Field. A beautiful, beautiful Sunday afternoon here in Ralston. Partly cloudy skies, temperatures in the mid-80s, pretty much no wind. As Danny Sponberg leads off for the Bombers. This will probably be their best chance to get the game tied. They have the top of their order, Sponberg, Grease, and Black. But they're dealing with a pitcher that is rolling today. Sponberg pulls one foul, strike one. Cole Warner, the left-hander for the Haymakers, if you're just joining us, has thrown five innings. He has struck out seven, and he has allowed one run, but it was an unearned run. And he hasn't walked anybody. 0-1 to Sponberg. Swing and a miss. That's a beautiful pitch on the outside. 0-2. Two to Sponberg, pulled down the left field line. That is a foul ball. So twice he puts a good swing on Cole Warner, but can't keep it fair. Still 0-2. Sponberg one for two today with a single in the first, a ground out in the third. Another 0-2 is upstairs. One ball, two strikes. One two pitch, same spot, up and away again. Two and two on Sponberg. Steps out for a moment. We're now ready for the two two pitch. Fouled off to the right side. Good AB from Danny Sponberg to lead off the sixth. This is the third time through the order for Cole Warner. As the 2-2 pitch is lifted into right field. That is playable for Betts, and he makes the catch for out number one. So nothing comes of the long at bat. And now James Grease will come to the plate. Now batting the left fielder, Stone University, number 44, James Grease. James Grease is 0 for 2, lined into a double play in the first and grounded out to third the second time up. Takes a strike. This is the guy the Bombers want at the plate. He has plenty of extra base power. Three doubles, three triples this year. He leads the team in slugging percentage coming into the game. And he fouls this one straight back over the press box and out of play, 0-2. Two pitch, that is low. One ball, two strikes. Warner looking for his eighth strikeout. It would tie a season high. 
But it's pulled into left field down the line. Foul ball. Grease got a pitch in on his hands and pulled his hands in and turned on it. But again, just couldn't keep it fair. This scoreline could be totally different if there's just slightly different timing on these swings. We've seen a lot going down the third base line today, but just about everything's been foul. Still one and two on Greece. Fouled straight back. It definitely looks like third time through, the Bombers are starting to see the ball out of Warner's hands a lot better, but it's just a matter of whether or not they can get the base runners. And they won't hear, swing and a miss. Greece strikes out on a pitch right over the plate. And the season high has been tied. Eight strikeouts for Cole Warner. Now that in. As it'll be up to Tanner Black with two outs. Number 42, Tanner Black. Black is over, or a one for two rather, a single and a strikeout. And he goes swinging away at the first pitch and can't make contact, strike one. And did he go? He did. 0-2. He'll step out for a moment. Cole Warner on the hunt for strikeout number nine. Here's the pitch. Upstairs, one and two. Cole Warner now up over 90 pitches. I told you earlier his season high coming in was 84. One, two. Not in there, two balls, two strikes on Tanner Black. So three consecutive 2-2 two -two counts here in the sixth inning. 2-2 two -two to Black, fouled off. That may have gotten the umpire. And wow, something came off his mask. Boy, that was a shot. Looks like everybody's all right down there, the equipment is not okay as, yeah, one of the wires came off the home plate umpire's mask. So two and two, and we'll keep it here for now just to see what kind of resolution we get out of this. Not a situation you see very often, and I mean, that's, that's a feeling you can only know if you're standing there behind the plate when you get a regular old pitch coming at you and all of a sudden it changes direction and it's flying straight back into your face. But I don't think you could have handled it much more calm, cool, and collected than the home plate umpire did and it looks like, well, he was about to put it back on but he's walking back toward the bomber's dugout. Looks like he may borrow one of the catcher masks. as Joey Burrill handed him something. It's a 2-2 count on Tanner Black after he fouled Cole Warner's pitch straight back into the umpire's mask. And if you're the Bombers, you would have liked to have had this happen earlier in the inning because this certainly disrupts Cole Warner's rhythm and timing. But the issue is the inning is Almost over, two and two with two outs. But it does look like the home plate umpire has received proper protection. And we are ready to resume play. An umpire mask delay, first time I've ever said that. As Warner brings the 2-2 home and it is inside to run the count full. Three, two to black. Low ball four. Two out base runner. Tying run is on, and it'll be the cleanup man, Nico Saul, trying to overcome two strikeouts already today. Wabash Valley, number 37, Nico Saul. This is a big moment right here for 
Powerful first baseman. Takes up and away, ball one, and maybe the timing is off for Cole Warner. He's missed on three straight pitches. Here's his 1-0. That is up and in. Saul has to duck out of the way, 2-0. The Haymaker bullpen is empty, despite Warner getting up near 100 pitches. And just as I say that, they're sending somebody out there. Looks like Andrew Duncan, as there's a wave and a miss from Saul, 2-1. and one. <laughs> Andrew Duncan, who has an ERA north of five and two relief appearances, will get up in the pen. 2-1 pitch, Warner to Saul. On the outside, 2-2, two and two, and Saul... Staring straight at a potential third strikeout of the day. Warner's 2-2 pitch. Just outside, three and two. Boy, he wanted that one. It's about the best miss you can have on two and two, but Looking very close to that outside corner. Now the 3-2. Runner will be in motion from first. Tanner Black. And a wave and a miss. Stahl bends the knee and strikes out swinging. And that is nine Ks for Cole Warner as he goes six innings and holds his team's lead at 2-1. Haymakers ahead of the Bombers as we go to the bottom of the sixth on the Corn Belt League Network. No matter what your age, skill level, or position, your baseball season begins at the Strike Zone. Featuring state-of-the-art batting cages, group and private instruction, the Strike Zone provides athletes all the training and equipment you need to get your game to the next level. Give the gift of development to your baseball or softball player. Purchase your Strike Zone gift cards today. Baseball never ends at the Strike Zone. Bottom of the sixth Houston. inning. Nebraska Wesleyan, number 30, Tyler 2-1 Haymakers as Tyler Merkel leads off. 8-9 and one hitters for the Haymakers as they have gotten an outstanding performance from Cole Warner. Their starting pitcher, six innings, nine strikeouts, one run, but it was an unearned run. Ball one to Merkel as Adam Eggert, who has turned in a nice relief performance on the mound. Continues to work. Off speed pitch, one and one. Eggert has gone two and a third innings, given up two hits, one walk, but he struck out five and has twice worked out of trouble. Zero runs allowed as there's a foul tip, one and two. Mind you, this is the first of three games we'll be broadcasting today. Two o'clock, we'll have the Red Raiders and Black Sox. Five o'clock, Crop Dusters and Filt Ballers. As that is ripped foul. Still one and two. Jack McGonigal will be joining me for both of those games. And then two more tomorrow and two more on Tuesday. 1-2 from Eggert it is dropped. Looked like it would have been close to the outside corner, if not on it, but the drop certainly doesn't help Eggert's case, and it's now 2-2. Two and two. Philip Jordan behind the plate.
And a swing and a miss. Strikeout number six for Adam Eggert as he gets Merkel to go chasing. And now Carter Betts, the nine hitter, now will step in. The right fielder from Nebraska Wesleyan, number 56, Carter Betts. Eggert with four swinging strikeouts, two of them looking. Two looking were to the man who's on deck and the man in the hole as this is lined into left center field. Let's see if it hangs up, and it does for Tanner Black. You know he can cover some ground out there, but that one just stayed up in the air for him long enough. And two outs. Go back to the top of the order, David Swanson. Number 38, David Swanson. Swanson with his fourth plate appearance now. As he goes after the first pitch and sends it foul. Swanson one for three with a single and a run scored in the third. And that at the moment is the game winning run should the score remain the same. Good pitch from Eggert, 0 and 2. Swanson struck out looking in his lone at bat against Eggert in the fourth. Is the one-two pitch. Line, right field, Sponberg on the move. Can't get there, it's down for a fair ball and it slices into foul territory. The throw to second base is dropped. That's a double for David Swanson. He slices one down the right field line. And the Haymakers have a potential insurance run in scoring position with two down. Now Trevor Yorgis will come to bat in a lefty-lefty matchup Yorgis. with Adam Eggert. This is the third time now Eggert has had at least one man in scoring position with two outs. He's gotten out of it each of the first two times as he gets a high chase from Yorgis for strike one. one pitch, slapped foul, nothing in two. And one of the things that makes Eggert such a tough matchup is how quickly he comes home. He's got a really good slide step. Base runners have the ball come to the plate before they can really even take off. 0-2 pitch, slapped foul again. Still nothing in two on Yorgis. He's put a couple good swings on Eggert after a wild chase for strike one. O2 again. Fouled off again, just reaching out and defending himself at the dish. Still 0-2 on Jorgis, who has walked, grounded out, and struck out. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Adam Eggert. He has seven of them. And three outs remaining for the Bombers. They trail two to one. They've trailed two to one since the third inning. Can they finally come through in the seventh? We'll see coming up next on the Corn Belt League Network.
Top of the seventh inning. Bombers with three outs to work with, trying to get this game tied against the Haymakers, trailing two to one. You see six hits for the Bombers, seven for the Haymakers. And as Cole Warner is going to try to finish this game, as he fires low and in ball one. Warner has already thrown 104 pitches. Six innings, nine strikeouts. He's allowed six hits, walked only one, and allowed one run, which was unearned. That is barrel down the left field line. It is deep, and it is foul. The hardest hit we have seen today, but again, just a little out in front from the right side of the plate. Braden Olsen, who has been a force at the plate at times this year, so he rips one foul and it's one and one. Two and one. Olsen is one for two, singled in the fourth inning. Another two one pitch. High in the air, right center field. Betts and Villanueva. It'll be Betts making the catch for out number one. So Olsen put a couple good swings on, but he just got under it. And now Kyle Weber with one down in the seventh. Now batting the second baseman from Bellevue University, number three, Kyle Weber. chance to finish this game well under two hours. It's been a quick one with the pitching we've seen from Warner and Eggert out of the Bombers bullpen. And this is first pitch to Lemon in for a strike. Check that's Kyle Weber. Lemon's on deck. Weber is one for two with a single and a run scored. And that was back in the second inning. On the inside corner, Weber just stands there for a moment. 0 and 2. Didn't like the call, but he's got to gear up now. 0 2 pitch. He loops it into left center field. That is going to drop past the diving small. A wide turn at first, and Weber will stay put with a single. Tying run is on with one out in the seventh. So a great effort from Small in left field. It was pretty clear from up here that he wasn't going to get to it. As that ball was sinking and also knuckling a little bit towards center field. But here is Caleb Lemon. One for two with a single today. And he goes after the first pitch and chops it foul. Weber at first base. He's three for three stealing bases this year. We'll see if he goes. In there on the outside corner, another beautiful pitch from Warner. It's 0-2. Rolling up here. Up and away. One ball, two strikes. Caleb Lemon trying to come through and at least get the runner into scoring position here. One, two pitch, fouled off. Lemon coming into the day, team leader in batting average at 367. He's also tied for the team lead with four doubles and something into the gap could certainly score Weber who has good enough speed. Another one, two. Upstairs, two balls, two strikes. Lemon doing well to prolong this at bat. Warner now up over 115 pitches. Bullpen is empty for the Haymakers. That is ripped foul down the left side. Still two and two. <laughs> J 
Chopper over the mound to short. Tanabe throws to first in time. And a quick snap throw back to second is late. Lemon grounds out, but he moves Weber into scoring position, and it's going to come down to the catcher, now, Philip Jordan. The catcher from Presentation College, number 47, Philip Jordan. Jordan, one for two. He reached on an error in the second inning and doubled in the fifth. First pitch from Warner. Wave and a miss. Strike one. Jordan batting 444 coming into the day with men in scoring position. Deal one pitch outside, one and one. And Jordan has belted a home run this year. It came a while ago back on June 12th against the Rail Riders, but he certainly has the power not only to tie the game, but maybe even turn it completely around. 1-1. One, one. Low and in. 2-1 and one to count. First base is open, and you have the 9 and 10 hitters, Joey Burrill, and at least scheduled for Rebecca Lair, but it looks like Gage Julin is going to take her place in the 10 spot. Two one pitch, cut on and missed. And Warner is a strike away. Two and two. He's over 120 pitches. Is this the one that ends it? No, it is grounded to short. Diving stop, Tanabe, the throw down, in time! Incredible play, Zach Tanabe, to end the game and seal the complete game for Cole Warner. Jordan is robbed of a hit that would have tied the game, and the Haymakers win it two to one. A phenomenal ball game to start our triple header here on this Sunday at JJ Isaacson Field, and the Haymakers fired up, exchanging handshakes and high fives, and the Bombers came so close again and again. But it was Cole Warner's day, and Zach Tanabe with a couple outstanding plays at short. Seals the deal on a 2-1 win. So we will come back and talk to Cole Warner, our player of the game, when we return here on the Corn Belt League Network. Big win for the Haymakers on this Sunday afternoon.
Welcome back to J.J. Isaacson Field, an outstanding baseball game to start our Sunday triple header with the Haymakers holding off the Bombers for a 2-1 victory, and I am joined by our player of the game, and it was maybe the most obvious choice we've had all year. Cole Warner, your line today, seven innings, a season-high 123 pitches, a season-high nine strikeouts. to give up one run, but it was unearned. I mean, what was working for you today, man? It was unbelievable to watch. Uh, I mean, the slider was really working for me pretty well. I was locating the fastball well, so, you know, it's a recipe for success. Yeah, absolutely. And just how did it feel going out there in those last few innings? Your season high coming into the day was 84 pitches thrown in a game. You threw 123. So, you know, how did the arm feel? Was there ever a conversation with your head coach? You know, just what was... What was going through your mind those last three innings as your pitch count's getting up there? Yeah, I mean, uh, after the sixth inning, my coach was like, you sure you're good? And I was like, yeah, might as well, you know, 2-1 ball game. So I was pretty tired out there, but rely on the off speed, just hitting the legs a little bit, and you're all good. There you go. Well, you got some hard-earned days off now. Now that last out by Zach Tanabe, the diving stop at shortstop, you had some great defense from the left side of your infield with Swanson, Tanabe at short, but... And what was your reaction? I thought for sure that ball would at least get knocked down, maybe go into center field. But yeah. you know, what was the reaction on that one? Oh, that play was incredible. I uh, had a runner on second, and he stopped it, dove and stopped it. And I was like, well, at least we'll hold the run. And then he turned around and threw it. And incredible play. Yeah, phenomenal game play. Game saver right there. Yeah, no doubt about it. And confirms a complete game as well. Now the last thing, Aiden Urbaum, your teammate, was pitcher of the week last week, and you could be on the fast track to win it this week with this outing. Just what's it like having that one-two combination at the top of that rotation with him? Yeah, it's good. It's awesome. We got we got a few good pitchers this year with Van Hill too. So I mean, it's great. We're looking pretty good, set up for the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. And this win builds a ton of confidence for you guys. You got the Bombers coming up again tomorrow, and I could just see it in the handshake line, high five line after the game. I mean, you guys were pumped. Yeah. What does this do for you guys' confidence going forward? Uh, it was good to get a win. We were on a little losing skid, so really good to get a win for sure and excited for tomorrow. All right, Cole Warner, our player of the game here on the Corn Belt League Network. Haymakers win it 2-1 over the Bombers. We will be back at 2 o'clock for the second game of our triple header. Stay with us here on the Corn Belt League Network.